Hello everyone, welcome and welcome to hello everyone. I'm just excited to play my game. Welcome to my catwalk TBR game for the month of January. So we're focusing on my winter board. Now there are a few books I want to try to get on to my game. It's going to depend on the prompt or get onto my TBR for either way, they're on the TBR for January, but I wanna to try to get these to fit onto the prompt. It's gonna depend on the prompt, it's gonna depend on the color and all of that. So, <clears throat> I've got a list here, double-sided. Let's talk about group reads. There are seven, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six. As of right now, there's six. The first one is one that I host, which is to read a book every month by an author that is on the autism spectrum. For January, we are going to be going with A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. Um, I will come back to the synopsis if I cannot get these on the board. Because if I can get it for a prompt, I don't want to read the synopsis two or three times to you. So, that's one. And the other one, <clears throat> another one I would like to get on is I'm a Patreon member for Allison from Allison Pages and the group read for January is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I think I got this one shortly after it was released um, and I just haven't gotten it yet to it yet. When did this come out last year? Yes, 2023. So yeah, so Tress of the uh, Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. Four, Book Stara. This one takes place over two months, uh, but the priority for January is Jade City by Fonda Lee. So I want to get to that one. And then for Read Diversely, which is part of a Discord group that I'm a part of, it's the book for selection for January is The Bone People by Carrie Holmey. And then there's a memoir one as well, which that one I have an ebook copy of, and that is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. Uh, so I want to try to add that. And then the sixth, the next seven, six, what did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, sixth book um, by Tilted Kettle, which is a Discord group that I'm a part of. The book club pick is The House Witch by Delamock, I'm guessing is how that is said. So yeah. Now, those are the selections as of right now. I'm going to tell you, as of right now, today is December 6th. I'm just trying to get ahead and caught up on what I need to, especially with Christmas coming up, for what I need to read for uh, for for the readathon. Um, my TBR game, holy cow. I'm trying to stay ahead due to the Christmas holiday. It's just gonna get busier, so my time to be able to film is gonna diminish the closer we get to Christmas. Now, as of right now, there's also a couple of, there are a lot of year-long readathons I'm gonna be trying to participate in. Some of them have 30 prompts, some of them have 52 prompts. As I read these books, I'll just see what prompt fits what. But there are a couple of them where it's one prompt per month. <clears throat> In one case it's actually two. So beyond the bookends, the prompt is to read a book that has been adapted to the screen. I don't think any of these have. I'm not sure. Uh, so that's beyond the bookends. And then for novelists, it's to read a 2023 debut. Although if it's supposed to be like a debut author, I'm gonna have to look at that. Uh, and then chapter adventure, they have two. They have where you read a, a motif, so a red carpet type read. Uh, I think that would be that one, but I don't know. And then a keyword, secret, heaven, true, house, come, only, no, and winter. Uh, so those have to be in the title. I'll look more into these. And then the She Reads Romance books, the theme for January is a dark romance or a 2023 title you didn't get to. Read Around the World by Paperbacks and Ponytails has a Read Around the World one. And the first prompt is a packing list item on the cover, just whatever you would pack to travel. Hashtag a year a thon, which is on Goodreads, is a book published in 2023 or a coming of age. 
And then there is a readathon called Build Your Bookshelf. This one, there's two paths, and I, I'm going to try. You focus on one path, and if I can only read one, I'm going at the path that's based off of L.M. Montgomery. The other one is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but I, I am going to try and do both, <laughs> just because I like to punish myself and really challenge myself and make things difficult for myself. So, um... And this is hosted by Chantel Reads All Day. So the prompt for Ellen Montgomery is to read a book that has a cat on the cover. Or you can do Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and that is to read a book with a dog on the cover. My preference is Montgomery just because it's a cat on the cover. Uh, but, and I think that'll be fairly easy. I'll just have to grab, okay, see one of my, this has a cat on the cover. So this would qualify for that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I'll try to finagle these. I am still waiting to see if Kayla from Books and Lala does her buzzword. If Completely Melanie is going to do her TBR that she has done before. Uh, there's no announcement video as of yet. Again, today's only the 6th of December. I'm just trying to film while I can before I get really busy with working in retail. And then if G does another like Year and Alita or something like that. I'm waiting on those ones because there's no announcement videos for any of those. Outside of that, if I see someone else post something, then I'll add it. But as of right now, this is what I have. And then obviously if they announce things towards the middle or end of December, then I'll have that information for my February TBR game. But so these are the books I want to try to get on. I'm going to try my hardest. We will see how that goes. Uh, with that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the roles. So for those of you who are new, uh, welcome to my channel. This is not a set I have to read these books. This is more like a TBR suggestion pile. I have a lot of unread TBR books. I will get overwhelmed trying to mood read. I am not, unless there's something I am absolutely dying to read, like, really, really, really wanting to read. I mean, I want to really read all of my stuff, but generally I tend to get overwhelmed with all of the options. So this TBR game helps me narrow down from tons to a more manageable pile to pick from. I start out with five rolls. This can easily triple. Uh, if punishments, if the dice does not stay in the container when I roll, if I get a double, if I get the same prompt twice, so example, one of the prompts is gift. If I get gift twice in one game. If I get, and I keep tallies, once a prompt hits five tallies, it's adding a roll. If I get the same uh, square five times, because I keep the same amount of squares, which is 30 squares, and I have added one where if I land on space 24 twice in one game, that's adding another one. Uh, one of these is to pull a booktuber and get a book based off of the prompts that they get for their game. So I could get a lot. And then I have to get a color to try and fit the prompt. So let's say I get gift and then I need to find something that fulfills that prompt that has this color on there. In this particular case, it's seafoam green. It's whatever color I randomly draw. If I don't find one that fits the prompt and the color, then I split, find one that fits the prompt, find one that fits the color. If I can't find one that fits the color, then it's a third book, which is the punishment book in this case. So it can easily triple. So, and that is okay. If there is no punishment for not finishing my TBR stack. Uh, again, this is a stack of possibilities. I may get a book and say, I am just not feeling it. And so it's like a soft DNF and I'll get to a month or several months later or I may say, I absolutely hate this book and I'm going to DNF it. You know, it's, there is no punishment for not finishing my TBR game. I'm just, because life happens. I could end up in a slump. I could be really sick and not be in the mood to read because I'm sick. Who knows? Because my health sucks. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into the rolls. So I just use these magnets. There's a set of four. I just rotate through them. So we're doing this black cat magnet with a purple background. And I need my phone because we need to randomly generate what number I'm going to start on. Okay. 
Random. <laughs> nope, I don't have what I need. Okay. All right, random number generator. I have 30 spots. So, okay. Starting on space number six. Okay, space number six is right there. So, I'll move that down. Okay, prompt number one. Okay, we have a six and a three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A bouquet. Okay, and that is spot number 15, which is right here. This is the first time getting this prompt. Bouquet is to read a book that has a flower on the cover. And this board is for December, January, February. So we have the January and then February. Now we need to get a random color. Okay, so we're going with this kind of a bluey one, uh, Nile Blue. Uh, let's go ahead and just get the elephant in the room. Uh, talked about. Yes, I'm in a different outfit than when I opened this video. <laughs> uh, my mom had surgery yesterday. A family friend took her to the hospital because I had to work. And it, she had surgery on her right foot. Uh, and it was during the middle of my work shift. So I couldn't take her to uh, work. Or... I couldn't take the time off of work to take her. So we had a family friend who was more than willing to do so. So she got back last night and by the time I had finished all of my roles and stuff, things just got busy with tr getting her situated and then with trying to pick my books and everything. By the time all that was done, it was almost 11 and it's like, I'm going to bed. So yes, I am in a different outfit. It is the next day, today is December 7th. So I have the books picked for my January TBR now. Uh, so I will just continue to insert what book I'll be picking for what prompts in here. After I go through the prompts that I got for my TBR game, I will go through and tell you about the readathons or the read-alongs and the prompts and all of that and what books fulfill what uh, certain prompts and stuff. So we'll get into that after we finish going through the roles. So as you saw, roll number one, we ended up on, I ended up on bouquet, which this is to read a book that has at least one flower on the cover, has a flower on the cover. And the color that I drew to fulfill this prompt is this 15-5210, uh, which is a Nile blue. So the book that has flowers on the cover, they're small, but they are there, is The House Witch by Delamock. There are flowers right in here and in this foliage here. So these two spots, they do contain flowers. I mean, they're small. So there you go, now you can see the flowers. As far as the color goes, it's in the shading of like this plant. So this is The House Witch. This is book number one in a series. It says, when Finley, Finley Ashwone joins the staff of the king and queen of Doxaria, he's an enigma. No one knows where he comes from or how he came to be where he is, uh, came to be where he is, which suits Finn just fine. He's satisfied simply serving as the royal cook, keeping nosy passerby out of his kitchen, and concocting some truly uncanny meals. But Finn's secret identity doesn't stay hidden for long. After all, it's not every day a house witch and his kitchen familiar Kraken take to meddling in imperial affairs. As his powers are gradually discovered by the court, Finn finds himself involved in a slew of intrigues, 
going head to head with knights with less than chivalrous intentions, helping to protect the pregnant queen, fending off the ire of the royal mage, and uncovering a spy in the castle. And that's only the beginning, because Finn's past is catching up with him, just as his love life is getting complicated. Filled with fast, okay, and then it's like how this has fascinating intrigue, courtly intrigue, fascinating characters, all of that. So, the house witch. This does show up on some of my 2024, or will show up on some of my 2024 readathons, but I will let you know when it does. All right, prompt number two. We've got six, so a five and a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, snow. So, oh, okay, here it is, snow. First time landing on this one, and that is to read a book that has water on the cover, okay? And that is space number 21. Okay, that is the third time overall on square 21. Still safe. And the color, be nice if it's a blue. Nope. <laughs> uh, Fiesta is the color choice, kind of an orangey red. Fiesta. So roll two, uh, let it on snow, and that's to read a book that has water on the cover. And then the color I just realized something. Anyway, the color I got was Fiesta, which is 171564. So it's kind of a red color. So I ended up splitting this one. Because when I was looking at these, I didn't realize that the book that I picked to fulfill the color, I could count for water on the cover, but I need to get this other book read. And this other book does not fulfill the color. So the book, um, this one is part of a group read and is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. There is water. So she's on a little island and there's water just right here and kind of back behind the island and it wraps around. So water on the cover, Tress of the Emerald Sea. The only life Tress has known on her island home is an emerald green ocean uh, has been a simple one. With the simple pleasures of collecting cups brought by sailors from faraway islands and listening to stories told by her friend Charlie. But when his father takes him on a voyage to find a bride and disaster strikes, T Tress must stow away on a ship and seek, seek the, sorceress, the sorceress of the deadly midnight sea. Amid the spore, oceans where pirates abound, uh, can Tress leave her simple life behind and make her own place sailing a sea where a single drop of water can mean instant death. So water on the cover this now for to fit the color I'm going with into the drowning deep by Mira Grant this like red there in a lot of the shading it, this fiesta color is there I think this is I, I don't know if that's blood or I think it's blood but it there's bubbles and so she's in the sea so that's she's in water so this could work for both of these but where this is a group read I needed to get this on the on the TBR anyway so this will cover for the prompt even though this would cover for both but it is what it is okay into the drowning deep seven years ago the autogratis set off on a voyage to the marina trench to film a mockumentary bringing to life ancient sea creatures of legend it was lost at sea with all hands some have called it a hoax others have called it a tragedy now a new crew has been assembled some seek to de validate their life's work some seek the greatest hunt of all some seek truth but for the ambitious young scientist victoria stewart this is a voyage to uncover the fate of the sister she lost there is a prequel to this. I read the prequel on ebook and really enjoyed it, so I am looking forward to getting to this one. 
All right, prompt number three. All right, we got a double. So we're going for uh, six rolls. Okay, so moving four spots. So again, we'll have to do six, get six prompts. One, two, three, four, countdown. That is square number 25, right? Yep. Two tallies for square 25. And then countdown. That's fall, winter, here we go. All right, countdown. This is gonna be a little harder. There has to be a time source on the cover. It could be a watch, a sundial, a stopwatch, something. So it has to have a time source on the cover. Hmm, that's gonna be a little bit more difficult probably. Okay, color. Purple is this purpley color, number 7654. So a time source on the cover plus has this purple. Okay, so as you can see, prompt three, I ended up on Countdown. And this is to read a book that has a time source on the cover. This was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And I had to stop hunting because my back was starting to hurt. So I give myself a limit of, like, if there's a place I've got to go to, I have a certain a lot of time. Could be 10 minutes. Could be maybe I have an hour to search or until my back starts to hurt from moving around, bending over, standing back up and stretching and walking around. Uh, so once the pain starts to increase, it's, I'm done. And that's what happened here. So I ran out of time to look. Again, this was a lot harder. So the book I am going to just use as a placeholder for this. Um, so it fulfills what the prompt would have been if it had a thing on the uh, time source on the cover is this is a discreet version. The title is actually on the inside, so there's nothing on the outside to tell you what it is. The Vince and Ellie that you're seeing are the main characters that we'll be following. This is book number two in the Valetti crime family series. The title is His Hostage. And the synopsis is on the inside. I will insert an image of the one of the actual covers. You have a couple of different cover variations. This is the Discrete series. I absolutely love the simplicity of these, so I'm trying to collect these. This is by Willow Winters. So his hostage. I was innocent before him, and he wanted nothing more than to ruin me. And if I'm honest, I wanted him to, even knowing I shouldn't. I knew he was a bad man. It doesn't take more than a single look to know it. Dark eyes and a charming smile that's made to fool girls like me. Still, I caved. I caved into temptation. And then I saw something I shouldn't have. Wrong place, wrong time. The Mafia doesn't let witnesses simply walk away. Regret has a name, and it's Vincent Valetti. He won't let them kill me, but he's not going to let me go either. And this is a dark romance, very spicy. Um, yeah. And that's per the author herself. She does say all of her books are spicy. Okay, now the color uh, that I drew to go with this prompt, so it had to be separated because I couldn't find a time source, is a purple color and it's 7654. So to fulfill this color, I'm going to go with 13 Trevors, Treasures, <laughs> 13 Treasures by Michelle Harrison. And this, there is a lot of different shades of purple in this and it does show up on here like in the tree in the bird so in the smoke so it is on this cover so that's what I'm gonna go with and this is the first in a trilogy but I did notice there is a prequel to this so anyway okay this one says Tanya has a secret she can see fairies but not the fairies we imagine these fairies cast spells on her rousing her from her sleep and propelling her out of bed Disturbed by her daughter's behavior, Tanya's mother sends her away to live with her grandmother at El Elvesden Manor, a secluded countryside mansion on the outskirts of town. There, an old photograph leads Tanya to an unsolved mystery. Fifty years ago, a, ago, a girl vanished in the woods, a girl Tanya's grandmother will not speak of. Tanya is determined to find the truth, but as she unearths more secrets, she finds herself dangerously close to following in the missing girl's footsteps. Because I couldn't fulfill the time source, I decided to do a punishment book. 
mostly because I'm trying to get a bunch of my group reads on this TBR. So take punishment very loosely. So the other book I need to get on here is The Bone Season by Carrie Hulme. In a tower on the New Zealand sea lives Kerwin Holmes, part Maori, part European, an artist estranged from her art, a woman in exile from her family. One night, her solitude is disrupted by a visitor, a speechless merc mercurial boy named Simon, who tries to steal from her and then repays her with his most precious possession. As Kierwin succumbs to Simon's feral charm, she also falls under the spell of his Maori father, or foster father, Joe, who rescued the boy from a shipwreck and now treats him with an unsettling mixture of tenderness and brutality. Out of this, uh, um, oh, and then it's just how this is a mystery, a love story, and it's ambitious, so, yeah. Okay, number four. All right, so we have a four and a three, so moving seven spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Christmas lights. All right, Christmas lights is right here. It's the first time with that prompt, and that is to read a book that has a light source on the cover. Okay, and that is spot number two. That's the fourth time, so we could end up the next round we play if I get land on square two again with an extra. Okay. Color. yellow that actually kind of fits but we'll see and uh, this is aspen gold all right prompt number four is christmas lights and this is to read a book that has a light source on the cover and then the color that i drew to go with this is this aspen gold color which is 13-0850 which is a yellow I'm going with Tailing a Tabby by Laura Cass. There's yellow in here, um, and the shade is kind of down along the base of this van. As far as the light source, you can't really see it, but the sun is either setting or rising there. So the sun is a light source, so that's what I am going with. And this is book number two in a cozy mystery series called A Bookmobile Cat Mystery. I really enjoyed the first one, so I'm really hoping to get to this one. The bookmobile is making its usual rounds when Minnie and Eddie are flagged down by a woman in distress. The woman's husband, a famous artist, needs emergency medical care. After getting him into the bookmobile, Minnie ra races the man to the hospital in time, but his bad luck has only just begun. After disappearing from the hospital, the artist is discovered slumped over the body of a murdered woman. Minnie knows that her new friend didn't commit the crime, but the evidence paints an unflattering picture. Now this librarian and her furry friend have to put the investigation in high gear and catch the real killer before someone else checks out. All right, what well, would have been the last roll, but is not. So for prompt number five, so we got six, a four, and a two. One, two, three, four, five, six, goal setting. Okay, so that is square number eight first tally there. Okay, goal setting is to read a book is a random word generator. Okay. All right, I've got all my generators here. Random word generator. Okay. That is the word. Band. Okay. All right, and the color that needs to accompany that is this blue, Swedish blue. All right, so prompt five is goal setting, and this is to read a book that has, uh, where I generate a random word and base the book along that word. And the word, as you saw, that was generated was banned. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going with another book club read, and this one is Jade City by Fonda Lee. 
For centuries, honorable green bone warriors have used magical jade to enhance their abilities and defend the island of Kikon from foreign invasion. Now the war is over and the new, a new generation Right, yes. Okay, a new generation vies for control over Kikon's bustling capital city. Four siblings of the powerful Kal family must prepare for battle, and the fragile peace between the clans is about to break. So I'm choosing band because people band together to defend their cities. They band together, in this case it looks like with Jade, to enhance their magical abilities. So, I'm saying this works. <laughs> so, um, okay. The color that I drew to go with that prompt is Swedish Blue, which is 18-4330. And the book that fits this one is All the Lovely Bad Ones by Mary Downing Hahn. There's a lot of blue, and it is in here in the shading, um, along the words, around the words, in the shoe. So it is on the cover. And this is a middle grade paranormal book. Travis and his sister Corey are thrilled to be spending the summer at their grandmother's remote Vermont Inn. The inn at Fox Hill has a history of ghost sightings. What could be more exciting than seeing a ghost? But no ghosts have appeared recently. Ghost hunting guests are few and far between, and the inn is in trouble. So Travis and Corey decide to do a little haunting of their own. Rapping and tapping and silent figures veiled in white are right up their alley. New ghost sightings will bring customers to the inn and help their grandmother stay in business. And they will have fun fooling people at the same time. They have no idea that their fake ghosts will awaken something real, something dangerous, something tied to the horrific secret past of the inn at Fox Hill. Okay, now, is this going to be the last prompt? Number six. Got a six and a three, so nine spots. One, two, three, four, five, six, date time. Yeah, I realized I moved six instead of nine. I will be adding this to my list so my paperwork it will be correct. Okay, so date time. This is the fourth tally for that prompt and this is to read a book that has two or more people on the cover. And that is square number 14, which is right here. And that's the third tally for that square. So we're good. That is the last prompt. All right. But we still need to get the color. So I need a book that has two or more people on the cover that has, let's just go with this one. Whisper Pink. Whatever that color is. I need to try to find this on there. So because I ended up with a double um, on the third roll to get the third prompt, I ended up with six prompts to try to get instead of the original five. So this final roll, as you saw, was date time. This is to read a book that has at least two people, so two or more people on the cover. I'm going with A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. The color that I drew to go with this prompt is Whisper Pink, which is 13-1107. It's hard to see. It's, I guess, a very, very pale, peachy pink. So it's in here, like in her nails, in some of the shading on his arm. It's harder to see along his hairline. Um, but yeah, it is, it is on the cover. So this fulfills both the prompt and the color. She's the town pariah. He doesn't give a damn. In Ruth Kabah's world, comic books are king. Silence is golden, and human contact is a pesky distraction. She doesn't like people, which works out just fine, because the people in this small town don't like her. The exception to that rule, Evan Miller, her way-too-charming next-door neighbor. Ex-military man Evan is all tattooed muscle on the outside and a big, cuddly teddy bear beneath. He's used to coaxing prickly people from their shells, but he's never met a woman quite like Ruth. Blunt, sarcastic, and secretly sad, she's his exact opposite. She's also his deepest desire. Soon, Evan's steady patience and smoldering smiles are melting Ruth's reserve, but when small-town gossip from her past begins to poison her future, she's forced to make a choice. Should she trust Evan completely, or is her heart safest alone? This will be a reread for me if I remember right. She is autistic, 
in the book, and I think this is told in a dual perspective. I don't know. It looks like it's it's definitely told in third person from what I can see, but yeah. So that's that's it. Those are all the books for the prompts. Now let's get into the readathons and real longs, and I'll tell you what books fulfill what prompts. Hello everyone. Okay. Uh, yes, future me editing Christine here. I realized, um, yeah, I moved six spots when I had rolled a nine. Sorry, the quality of this image is not very good. I am just recording off of my computer that I am editing the video so I can just try to insert it right on in. So I looked at the board and I'm not going to adjust the tallies or anything like that, but I have added it to my list of my prompts. Uh, so I should have landed on nine spots would be Christmas lights. I'm still wanting to get to all of these. A lot of these fit prompts or year long readathons. So I'm still keeping that because those books will help fulfill prompts for the year. So I'm adding Christmas lights prompt to this. And then I went ahead and just drew out of my box. I drew, went ahead and drew a color. This is number two, nine, one. Uh, to try to fit this prompt that I should have gotten <laughs> off of my game. So the book with, for the light source on the cover, there is a fireplace. So that's a source of light. And this is Knit One, Kill Two by Maggie Sefton. This is a cozy mystery book. The blue, um, it is in here, or very close, um, in the sky that's out in the window. So I'm going to count that for the color. And then the synopsis for this book says, uh, let's see, despite the fact that her aunt was an expert knitter, Kelly Flynn never picked up a pair of knitting needles she liked until she strolled into the house of Lambspun. Now, in the first, uh, first in a brand new series, she learns how to knit one pearl two and entangle the mystery behind her aunt's murder. Kelly Flynn would be the first to admit her life in Washington, D.C. is a little on the dull side, but coming back to Colorado for her beloved aunt's funeral wasn't the kind of excitement she was seeking. The police are convinced that her aunt Helen's death was the result of a burglary gone bad, but for the accountant and Kelly, things just aren't adding up. After all, why would her sensible 60-year-old aunt borrow $20,000 just days before her death? With the help of the knitting regulars at House of Lambspun, Kelly's about to get a few lessons in cranking out a sumptuously colored scarf and in luring a killer out of hiding. Okay, so that's knit one, kill two. And then I'm going to punish. I'm just going to add another book on here because I thought, one, this I can read this in one day because it is short and it's a manga. And I really, really, really want to get to this one. And that is Censored by Jinjun Ito. So I'm going to add this. And I'm labeling it as a punishment book, even though I don't, it's a mistake that happens, but I am going to go ahead and add it. We'll see if I can get to it, but I really want to get to this one. So this is Censor by Jinjun Ito. This is a horror manga. That's the back. A woman, okay. <laughs> it's got squiggles, so it's kind of harder to read, at least for me. A woman walks alone at the foot of... Mount Sengoku. A man appears saying he's been waiting for her and invites her to a nearby village. Surprisingly, the village is covered in hair-like volcanic glass fibers. So I think that's what this pattern is here. Um, where is it? Okay, all shining a bright gold. That night, as the villagers gaze up at the starry sky, countless unidentified flying objects, objects come raining down on them. The opening act for the terror about to occur. So this is a shorter story. It's This book is 233 pages, it looks like. Yes, 233 pages before the afterword. But where this is a manga, that'll read fairly quickly. So... I am going to add this onto my January TBR. Okay, so one of the read-alongs that I am participating in is one that I actually host, which is Autism Reads. The Discord link to the read-along is always in the description box. 
So the selection is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. The theme of 2024 is to read a book by an author who has been confirmed to be on the autism spectrum. Talia Hibbert has been confirmed to be on the autism spectrum, so we're reading a book by her. Um, so this is the adult selection. And then next month we'll do a young adult and then a middle grade after that. And then we'll go back to an adult book. So I'm trying to rotate through age ranges. So January is adult. So we're reading A Girl Like Her. And this is book one in the Ravenswood series. Now there are some readathons that if... The creators are going to do them again. They have not put announcement videos out, so I'm not going to know, for example, like TBR Knockout by Completely Melanie and Buzzword by Kayla from Books and Lala. Um, if they do their readathons in 2024, I'm not going to know the prompts right now. So they have yet to announce them if they're going to continue to do that. And so I'll just end up adding a book to my TBR if none of the books I've selected fit the prompts that they come out with. The next uh, group read. I am a Patreon member for Allison Pages and she talks about her chronic health issues, her autism and things like that and so I decided I wanted to support her. I really like her content um, as well and so I have joined her Patreon and the book club selection for January is Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. And then there are some readathons for the whole month. Like I'm going to do a, there's one that's called Read by Number, which is to read a book that has a number in the title, and the number's one through t uh, 12. And I'm not gonna worry about fulfilling those prompts until I read a book. And then probably in June, if I haven't, whatever I have left that I haven't fulfilled, I'll start to prioritize those ones. That's the same goes for the alphabet challenge, for the title of the book. Uh, for the, I'm doing an alphabet challenge as well for the authors, either their first name or the last name or middle name if it's on the book. It can be any of them. The next group read I want to participate in is Bookstar Read Along and this first book we will be doing for January and February and that is Jade City by Fonda Lee. Uh, so I am excited. And then there's a readathon that I decided where I want to try to read a book that takes place Somewhere in the United States, my goal is to read a book from each of the 50 United States. So, read a book set in Utah, Massachusetts, Florida, California. Um, and obviously I'm not going to know unless it says it on the synopsis. I won't know until I read the book. So there's some prompts I can't even consider until I read the book. So this next one is Beyond the Bookends, and it's beyondthebookends.com. There is one prompt per month to fulfill, and the prompt for January is Book Adapted to the Screen. This was an easy one. I want to reread this series. I wanted to read this third book in 2023, just ran out of time and didn't get to it, and that's Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is a slipcase cover. I got this from a website that is no longer active, so I don't even know if you can get any of these anymore. So the back of the slipcase is the night bus. The book is red, it has the night bus on it, and then it has a blue uh, ribbon, same color as the slipcase. So, and as we all know, or most people know, Harry Potter, every Harry Potter book has been adapted to the screen. They're all TV screens and they're now working to make it into a TV. I'm torn about that. I mean, I really enjoy this world, but for me the characters are who the characters are as we know them in the movies. and. I don't want a new Professor Snape or Dumbledore or any of these characters. I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a lot of remakes being done and I'm kind of tired of all the remakes. I think people can be more original. I would like to see movies that are based on indigenous culture and folklore and their stories and history. I would like to see more movies about that. Same thing when it comes to African culture, folklore, myths and legends, Egyptian, Greek, you know, I'd like, I would like to see more of that, more of their histories, a lot of their histories adapted to the TV screen so we can learn maybe a little bit. I know it's all going to be fictionalized, but based on a true character or a true person in history, I would like to see more originality and stuff like that than a bunch of remakes. 
you know, the whole, like, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, all these Disney remakes, and now Harry Potter, and it's like, I just want more original stuff. I don't, you know, and my question is, and this is something for a completely different discussion, but my question is, how the heck do they decide what to remake and what not? Because I have yet to see them remake, how about, it's a musical, The Sound of Music. Never seen a remake of that. Um, what's another movie? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of original movies they haven't remade. I don't want to see them all remade. I just don't. I don't. I think the original is good the way it was. I don't. Anyway, that's a whole nother thing. I just want to see more originality and more creativity in the world. So, anyway, okay. For novelist, the it is one prompt per month, and the prompt for January is a 2023 debut. I am taking this to be a debut author, and so I am going with Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors. This is her debut novel, and this is actually an arc. <laughs> I have not gotten to this one yet, but I love the cover, and I am going to read this. I didn't read the synopsis for Harry Potter because most people know Harry Potter, The Boy Who Lived, all of that. Um, and people are still out to kill him, basically. Ink Blood Sister Scribe. This says, for, uh, for four generations, not the number four, a four. For four generations, the Calate family has guarded a collection of ancient and rare books. Books that let a person walk through walls or manipulate the elements. Books of magic that half sisters Joanna and Esther have been raised to revere and protect. All magic comes with a price, though, and for years the sisters have been separated. Esther has fled to a remote base in Antarctica to escape the fate that killed her own mother, and Joanna has isolated her family herself in their family home in Vermont, devoting to her life to the study of these cherished volumes. But after their father dies suddenly while reading a book Joanna has never seen before, the sisters must re must reunite to preserve to preserve their family legacy. In the process, they'll uncover a world of magic far bigger and more dangerous than they ever imagined, and all the secrets their parents kept hidden, secrets that span centuries, continents, and even other libraries. Now for this one, where my goal is to read a book that takes place in each of the 50 states, I could use this one for possibly Antarctica and possibly Vermont, but if that's only a portion of it and they both go to a different state to resolve whatever's going to do upon their parents' death, then I may choose whatever state that is, if I use this one for one of those states at all. But this is an ARC, and the release date on this was June of 2023. I did verify with Goodreads this actually did come out in 2023. I don't remember if it came out in June or was postponed, but it did come out in 2023. Next up is a group on Instagram, and they are doing two different readathons that I was able to find, one prompt per month. So I have two prompts for January. This first one is a red carpet read. So I am taking this to be something that's hyped or an author that is hyped and well-loved. It's basically, yeah, spread out the red carpet. It's a well-loved author or book. And I think this covers both of them, especially the author. For this one, I'm slotting in Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, a well-loved booktube darling. <laughs> The other one is a keyword, and so this is to read a book that has a particular word in the title. So kind of like Kayla's, uh, Kayla's buzzword one that she's done. So the words that we can choose from for this are secret, heaven, true, house, come, only, no, and winter, K-N-O-W. So I, because house is one of them, I'm using the house switch by Della Mac. So... That's what I'm going with. I'm, I'm not reading, obviously, if I've already held up the book, some of these will be held up multiple times. I'm not going to reread the synopsis. This next one is Romance Books, and this is from SheReadsRomanceBooks.com, and I will put these websites in the description box. The theme for January, you can either read a dark romance or a 2023 title that you didn't get to yet. I'm going with a dark romance, His Hostage by Willow Winters. So... Dark and Romance are both tags on Goodreads, and yes, so this is, I know it's a romance, it is spicy, and it's dark, so Dark Romance. 
One of the read-alongs is to read diversely, and the book selection, I'm part of the Discord group for this, and the selection for January to read diversely is to read from a Pacific Islander author. And this one we are going with The Bone People by Carrie Humi. She is from New Zealand. That same Discord group is to read a, their goal is to read one memoir every month and the selection for January I did not get on my Catwalk TBR game, which is fine, but I will be reading this one via ebook and that is Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. I have not seen everything that he is in, but what I have seen, I have liked. I haven't seen him in, I haven't seen a movie, a new release or a newer movie in since before COVID hit in what was that, 2018 or 19? So it's been several years. So I don't know if he's been in anything more recent within the last five years. I don't know, but Green Lights is a selection, and so that's... I do have that on my Kindle, so I will try to get to that. Okay, and then Katie from Paperbacks and Ponytails is hosting a Read Around the World-a-thon. The prompt for January is to read a book that has a packing list item on the cover, so something that you would pack when you would travel. Um, I'm going with 13 Treasures... Down here in the corner, I don't know if, how well you're going to be able to see that, but there is a key dangling from a branch, and I'm sorry, but you got to have your key <laughs> to get in the car, to get to wherever it is. I consider keys a packing list item. They are a must because i got to be able to get back into my house when I get home. So, to me, that's a mandatory got to have. Okay, and then what else do I have? Okay. This next one is for hashtag a year a thon. I follow this one on Goodreads and this is one prompt per month. And the select the prompt for January is a book published in 2023 or a coming of age. I'm going with a book published in 2023. This is another arc I have not gotten to. I did verify in Goodreads. This did come out in November of 2023. And that is a as search history by Amy Taylor. After fleeing to Melbourne in the wake of a breakup, all Anna has to show for herself is an unfulfilling job at an overly enthusiastic tech startup and one particularly questionable dating app experience. Then she meets Evan, charming, kind, and responsible. Evan is a complete aberration from her usual type. Anna feels like she has finally awoken from a long dating nightmare. As much as she tries to let their budding relationship unfold IRL in real life, Anna just can't resist the urge to find Evan online. When she discovers that his previous girlfriend, Emily, died unexpectedly in a hit and run less than a year ago, Anna begins to worry she's living in the shadow of his lost love. Soon, she's obsessively comparing herself to Emily, trawling through her dormant social media accounts in hope of understanding her better. Online, Evan and Emily's life together looked perfect, but just how perfect was it, and why won't he talk about it? Okay, and this next one, let me double check. I think there's, is there one more after this study to tell you about? Okay, so this next book will fulfill two of the things. Um, I'm a part of the Discord group for Tilted Kettle. They also have a Instagram. I'll try to remember to link that in the description box as well. But there's a book club selection every month. We have January and February's already picked out. I already own February's book. I'm excited to get to that one. Uh, this selection for January is The House Witch by, uh, again, Damon Locke. I'm sure I've been saying that wrong. But this is the selection for January. This will also fulfill another read-along prompt. A readathon prompt. And the readathon is to read your bookshelf. This is hosted by Chantel from Chantel Reads All Day. And the there's two paths that she's doing. One is to uh, is like the path of Lucy Maud Montgomery or L M Montgomery. And there's it's one prompt per month. And the January prompt prompt for Montgomery is Jane of Lantern Hill. This is to read a book that has a cat on the cover. Right there is the cat. So this will work. I'm using this for cat on the cover. Now she does have a second path that you can go with and I like to torture myself. <laughs> so I am, my priority is L.M. Montgomery just because it starts off with a cat on the cover. 
The other one is the path of Sir Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle. And at some point you can switch over from Montgomery, the Montgomery path to the Doyle path or vice versa. Um, but I want to fulfill both. That's just how I am. But I am saying in my mind, I have to read the book for Montgomery before Doyle. I don't know. I'm prioritizing Montgomery. Doyle is kind of secondary if I can get to him. Anyway, we'll work it out. She's she's done an announcement video that kind of explains it uh, a lot better than I can right now. <laughs> so the prompt for Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is Hound of Baskerville. This is to read a book that has a dog on the cover. This one I'll be going with an ebook if I can get to it. And the book is called Plainly Murder. This is a cozy mystery and this is a novella. This is the prequel to the series. The series is Amish Quilt Shop Mystery written by Isabella Allen. So because I'll be doing ebook, I have this pulled up on Goodreads. So I'll read you the synopsis. Welcome to Rolling Brook, Ohio, a quaint Amish community where life is less tranquil than it seems. Angela Braddock has come to Rolling Brook to lend a hand at her Aunt Eleanor's traditional Amish quilt shop. But when Eleanor's quilting circle mourns the loss of their oldest member, um, member Evelyn, they make a startling discovery about the tragic event in Evelyn's past. More than a decade earlier, during a, bar during a barn raising, Evelyn's son Eric fell from the roof and died. Evelyn had always insisted that Eric was pushed, and now a clue in an old quilt convinces Angie to dig up the truth and discover one of Rolling Brook's darkest secrets. So that's it. Uh, that is... let me see. Is it going to tell me when I go to details? 115 pages, it looks like. Although I think I'm going to switch, but that's by NAL. I'm going to switch to Berkeley. Berkeley says it's 98 pages for their Kindle. So somewhere between 98 pages and 115 pages. So just a little novella, but it does have a dog on the cover. So yeah, there are other readathons and read-alongs that I would like to participate in, but either the prompts have not be rele been released, if the creators are going to continue to do those into 2024, or they're prompts that I can't fulfill until I read the book to see if they will feel fit if they will fit the prompt. So that's it for this video. Let me know. Have you read any of these books? Have you read from any of these authors? Talk to me in the comment section below. I hope you have a great reading month for January. Until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book and I'll talk to you later.